Yes, two, uh, two things, really. One, that there are still a lot of South Africans living in these, poor, these rural peripheries. That's a sort of a, a legacy that just won't go away that quickly because it's costly for the poor to migrate. So as soon as you understand that, it's not just a question of, well, it's obviously better, or better in the cities, so we should get this floodgates opening and apartheid would disappear. So that's one thing. A lot of the most poor South Africans are still stuck in rural areas. Two, even within urban areas, the geography of apartheid was these sort of uh, locations, as they were called, uh, for black South Africans stuck away from where the action was. So um, there's been a lot of attention given to that in, in South Africa, but not wholly successful because it requires either you move people or you get really good public transport. And, uh, and you can't move people easily if the, if the housing market is a private market of buying and selling and things. There's been some movement of that sort, but it's mostly at the upper end of the middle class. Um, and then public transport, uh, things have improved, but they're not, they're not great. And so there's plenty of micro-studies showing that it's actually very costly for young South Africans to go and look for a job. Given the expected return, it's sometimes irrational to go and look for a job because it, you know, it could easily cost you 80 rand a day in transport costs and your chances of getting a job are very, very low and, uh, and you can't do that day after day. I think we should be quite proud of, of that sort of social support aspects of what government has done since 1994. There's two key prongs. Child support is the, is the biggest one because it was brand new. There wasn't a, a child support grant. There was a small one. But, um, and it was crafted, as you say, by Francie London and others in a, as an official commission. It was evidence-based and put into place in uh, 1998 and rolled out over time, uh, starting quite conservatively with quite low age, ages. Uh, what happens is that the caregiver of children can access the grant, but it's tied to a, a child. So it was started with very low ages, and it's a very low amount of money. I think that's important, even to this day. Over time, the age limit at which it applies has been upped, and so it now extends all the way to 18. Um, and what we've seen is, uh, is a growth of up to, at this stage, uh, 14, 14 million, I think, 14 and a half million uh, South Africans are accessing a child support grant. A uh, small amount of money, maybe a third of um, uh, median income. But uh, the impact on poverty has been dramatic. And you can, you can see it in the surveys. You can literally see the, bot, the very bottom end of the distribution uh, moving, moving in a little bit in real income terms. If you add to that then the, the state old age pension, which was in place before uh, the post-apartheid period, but was deracialized and um, stabilized, hasn't really been expanded dramatically, but it's a fairly large amount of money. It's three times the child support grant, and it goes uh, with a very uh, loose means test to any South African when they become 60. Um, and has also has had a dramatic impact. In fact, so poverty has gone down over the post-apartheid period. Uh, not dramatically like in Brazil, but, but notably. And um, if you look for the cause of that or, or what's driven that, it's these social grants. It's the child support grant and it's the state old age pension that have caused that. Uh, they haven't, however, um, had a dramatic impact on inequality. I mean, the, the, we've improved the living standards at the bottom. It's still the same people who are at the bottom, if you think about it a, a bit like that. It's had a marginal, marginally improving effect on income uh, inequality, but the labor market still calls the shots on inequality. A really lovely question. The, the granny factor, because the state old age pension goes to somebody 60 years and older. It used to be 60 for women and 65 for, for males. It only got overturned on a constitutional court challenge, actually, on discrimination. 
uh, recently, in the 2000s. Um, and that worked out perfectly, almost, in a, in a bizarre sense. Because who do you want to get the money to if you want to have an impact on households? You want to get it to the grannies, not necessarily to the grandpas. You know, lots of cynical jokes in South Africa about beer and things, you know. Um, so the demography was such that if you gave it to grandpas at 65, there weren't that many living that long anyway. Uh, but the grannies, lots of really good... Uh, very solid social science, evaluating the impact of the pension on things like um, nutrition of the grandchildren, uh, school attendance of the grandchildren, uh, showing very, very strong positive effects of the pension. Uh, what, what is the mechanism? Uh, you know, you have to ask your, yourself the question, okay, well, how does income get from the granny down to the grandchildren? Some of that's about apartheid again. We have these household structures in South Africa that are often three generation households living in the same uh, you know place or even what's called skip generation households where as per Francis Wilson's story about migrant labor the working age members are off in the labor market somewhere else and the grannies and the grandchildren live together so there, there's some obvious reasons why money going to grannies could have an impact on children but and the lovely thing is you see that happening in the data. It's, it's probably the strongest area of evidence-based policy that we have in, this, in South Africa. Mm -hmm.